Here to discuss the fallout of Brexit is Richard Pater, director of BICOM, or the Britain-Israel Communications and Research Centre in Israel. Richard, welcome. Thank you. This result took nearly everybody by surprise. Why did Britain vote to leave the EU? Well, first of all, you're right. This certainly took us by surprise. And I suppose the one thing we shouldn't be surprised about is that we believed the polls that suggested that, uh, that it was going to be close or that, that we'd, they would remain. But I think to compound that, we saw 75% of British parliamentarians supporting to remain in the EU. We saw the vast majority of big business and small business, as well as the banking sector, supporting to remain. So, in a, in a sense, the vote was a vote against the establishment. Um, as, a, as a rejectionist of their current policies. It also fed into the, the zeitgeist in the country, which very much talked about against this amorphous body in Brussels, the unelected European uh, bureaucrats that were governing UK life. And this was, this was an opportunity for Britain to reclaim uh, sovereignty in their own, uh, on their own terms. I would add that since, uh, since Friday... Uh, we've seen an unbelievable turn in British politics, as your, as your report just mentioned. The resignation of the British uh, pa uh, Prime Minister and now the shadow cabinet as well is taking us really into flux. How did the British Jewish community approach the question of Brexit? Well, I'm careful not to speak on behalf of, oh, the, of, uh, of the of, of the community, but um, broadly speaking, the community was divided as well. I saw one poll published, and again, if we believe the polls, and I'd be sceptical as well, but one poll since the referendum suggested that it was 54% in favour of uh, the Brexit and 46% and uh, against. So that kind of assesses the mood of the, uh, well, of what, the community. What were the, what were the issues that animated the debate within the British Jewish community? Well, I, th well, I, th well, I think it was the same issues that, uh, that were affecting the rest of the... Uh, of the no, there was no specific um, kind of political cleavage on the Jewish issue um, directly. Obviously, immigration was a large issue within the, within, within the group, um, but not specifically affecting the Jewish community. One other point, I think, for the Jewish community, we're very sorry to see David uh, uh, the Prime Minister David Cameron go. He's been an incredible, strong supporter, both of Jewish issues within the UK and a strong, steadfast supporter of Israel, who has helped Britain-Israel ties. Well, as we saw in the report, there have been reports of a disturbing spike in racist abuse towards immigrants and foreigners in the UK. How deeply concerned should we be? Well, I think we should always be concerned whenever racism uh, raise, raises its head um, and speak out. But I would caution something that uh, it's a little too soon to know and understand this trend. And of course, we do have anecdotal evidence, but we don't yet have any statistical evidence to back that up. In fact, I just found out on the way here that tomorrow this issue is being discussed in the British Parliament and it's being raised to actually quantify and understand exactly the sense of, uh, of, this, uh, of these disturbances. Well, let's hope it's not a long-term phenomenon. Absolutely. Last week, Prime Minister Cameron gave a special speech to the Jewish community in which he argued that Britain needed to remain in the EU in order to protect Israel. Mm. Now that Britain no longer, or will, my, no longer have a seat at the European table, what shifts might we expect in European foreign policy towards Israel? Right. Well, well first of all, I think it's, uh, it's fascinating to see what happens internally within the European countries. I mean, what we've seen, the previous leaders of the European Union, Holland and France, which kind of the vanguard of European identity, are also questioning, uh, similar, to mm. the, similar to Britain, and whether they want to remain. So you could find a, a pan-European movement which also wants to, uh, to move away from the organisation. In the short term, I don't suggest, I don't predict we'll see much change. I think significantly the, EU, the EU will remain Israel's largest trade partner, and that's very significant. And other cooperation, for example, the Horizon 2020, which, uh, which focuses investment on research and development, will also continue. So we're um, not expecting boycott efforts to take up, uh, pick up steam there. I mean, I think the boycott efforts are there on the on the margins, and they and, and they they make a loud noise, but they will hopefully remain on the margins. And I don't think we should be uh, too. too too, uh, too over overly excited because of the UK change in position. Okay, we'll continue to monitor this story very closely. Thank Absolutely. you, Richard. Thank you.